Welcome back to my channel. It's Destroy Deception. J. Kells here with another video. Today's video, we will ask the question How do I keep the feast of unleavened bread? How do I keep the feast of unleavened bread? Well, a great place to start to actually understand how we should keep the feast of unleavened bread is simple. We actually are going to read. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1 through 8. And it reads, Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leaven bread with it. Seven days shall thou eat unleavened bread. Therewith, even the bread of affliction, for thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt, all the days of thy life. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 4 through 5, and it reads, And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coasts. Seven days, neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacrifices the first day at even. Remain all night until the morning. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 6 through 8. But at this place, which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there shall you sacrifice the Passover at even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. And thou shalt roast and keep it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou, thou shalt do no work therein. And so we clearly begin to have a great description on how to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There's two more places that I want to verify that's also a part of keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12, verse 8, and it reads, And thou shalt eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs thou shalt eat it. Let's hop over to Numbers chapter 9, verse 11, and it reads, the fourteenth day of the second month, at even, thou shalt keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So we see in both instances that it's actually talking about the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called Passover. On that day, there's an additional uh, requirement of bitter herbs to eat with, uh, that is, what's roast by fire, also with uh, the, the unleavened bread. Right. So let's break this thing down into two sections. We're going to break the requirements down into time and duty and then have and have nots. What we can and can't do, basically. Right. Let's see. As we start with time and duty. First, understand that the Feast of Unleavened Bread includes the Passover. That's number one. Feast of Unleavened Bread includes the Passover. The, the, the uh, eating unleavened bread starts on Passover. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread starts with Passover. Passover is day one, and the next seven days is the remaining feast days of unleavened bread. So therefore, if after the Passover, the next six days, you are free to do work. But the day of Passover, you should not do any work. There's no servile work. You can cook. But you cannot do any servile work, nor your neighbor, nor anything. Unless it is a regular weekly Sabbath, though. So if a regular weekly Sabbath show up during the time of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, then we have to still keep the Sabbath day. It's a regular weekly Sabbath, right? And then on the last day of the feast, there's another solemn assembly, as we read in verse 8 of Deuteronomy chapter 16. There's another a solemn, solemn assembly where there's no servile work. Well, we won't put in, but we won't do work. We can cook, 
do those things, but there's no servile work. So that's the time and the duty of the requirements in regards to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But let's talk about the additional haves and have-nots, right? Haves and have-nots. Number one, no leaven in your house or dwellings, anywhere. Number two, eat unleavened bread for the total of eight days. The first day is Passover. The next seven days are, are the continuation of the unleavened feet eating unleavened bread. Number three, eat bitter herbs on the day of Passover. It is a part of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Since Passover is a part of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, this is the reason why it's put here to understand how to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Number four, animal offerings. There's an animal offering on the first day and on the last day. But because we don't have a temple, it's not applicable. Alrighty. Like the video, leave a comment below, turn your notification bells on, share the video with whomever is in, is in need, and subscribe right now. It's Destroy Deception. J.K.L. is here, and I'm out.